Now that we've developed the concept of voltage, uh, we need to move on to electrical materials before we can start talking about other circuit properties. And uh, the electrical materials that we're interested in talking about, um, discussing the properties of right now, it are conductors, semiconductors, and insulators. Uh, some of this stuff should hopefully be a review. Uh, I may introduce a few new concepts, um, but we need to be familiar and, and be able to talk about uh, the differences between conductors and insulators in particular. Um, the thing that defines how a uh, material behaves electrically is primarily based on its atomic structure. Um, an element is, is, of course, determined by the number of protons or positive charges that uh, exist within the, in the nucleus. Um, so for an uncharged atom, the number of protons is balanced by the number of electrons. If there are uh, more or uh, if there are fewer electrons or more electrons, then we will have a uh, positively or negatively charged uh, um, atom. Um, what we're most concerned about uh, in this atomic uh, arrangement is the uh, valence electrons. All right, so in some elements, uh, as you should be familiar with from, from chemistry and, and from materials, if you've had materials, um, in some elements, the valence electrons are loosely constrained to the outer shell. Um, and only a little bit of extra energy is needed to free these electrons from their valence uh, configuration. All right, so conductors are good examples of that. All right, most metals, like copper, gold, and aluminum, have weakly constrained valence electrons. Um, they have one or two electrons in their valence band, um, and we, uh, at uh, room temperature, these valence electrons have a lot of kinetic energy to them. And uh, this kinetic energy allows them to be able to escape from the valence uh, shell or escape from their associated nucleus and become what we call a free electron. Uh, so if we put a bunch of copper atoms together, um, these uh, valence electrons can kind of wander throughout the material. Uh, at room temperature, they have sufficient energy where, so that they can kind of migrate from, uh, from atom to atom. All right, so um, this is what forms the basis of conductors, or these uh, extra free electrons uh, that are available to kind of move around, or randomly move throughout the crystal. So uh, at room temperature, um, these electrons are going to randomly m move in a random matter, uh, manner throughout the, throughout the crystal. They're just kind of, kind of bounce around. But once we uh, apply a potential difference, or a voltage, or an electric field, um, across this structure, the electrons are going to um, tend to want to go in a direction that's opposite of the electric field. Now they're still going to move kind of randomly. They're going to bounce against things. They're going to bounce against other electrons, against other uh, uh, electrostatic fields that are generated in the uh, because of the atomic structure. They're, they're not going to move in a straight line, but on average they're going to sort of drift in the direction opposite of the electric field. Remember that an electric field is established and the electric field lines are drawn from a, uh, uh, from a positive charge to a uh, negatively charged area. Um, so electrons are of course going to want to drift towards the positive, uh, towards the location of positive charges, which means they're going to move opposite of the electric field. So uh, a good electrical conductor has a lot of free electrons that are available to drift throughout the material when we apply an electric field to it. Right. Insulators, on the other hand, um, have, uh, have tightly constrained uh, valence electrons. So insulators are usually ceramics or, some, or composite materials, um, or in some cases plastics. Um, and the electrons in the valence shell are tightly bound to the atom, uh, either through uh, bonding relationships or um, just because of uh, because their valence shell is is, is nearly filled or, or or fully filled, and they're happy. Um, so uh, in insulators, there are not free electrons uh, to move in response to an electric field. Um, the only thing that can happen to an an insulator is that it can become polarized when an electric field is applied. So um, electrons don't readily move through the material, but what can happen is the, my, the electrons, when we apply an electric field, tend to migrate uh, to uh, one side of the, uh, of the atom. Um, so all of the electrons and, and will, 
will move to one side and the positive charges uh, will move kind of towards the other side of the atom and we get what's what's called a dipole. We have um, a concentrated center where we're going to have more negatively charged uh, particles, the electrons, and the nucleus is going to exist over on the other side um, and that's going to be more positively charged. But electrons cannot migrate throughout the material. They can only become polarized um, and uh, and 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 um, that, that well that's of importance um, that, that they can become polarized uh, but they cannot allow electrons to to migrate through their structure. Alright so to talk about semiconductors, a semiconductor is not really a conductor and it's not really an insulator. Um, the uh, best way to talk about semiconductors is in terms of band diagrams. So um, band diagrams uh, are shown here both for an insulator, uh, that's A, and a conductor. And uh, in these energy diagrams, uh, the, the x-axis does not represent anything, um, at least in, in this example. Uh, it can, but in this example uh, it's, it's not uh, representing anything. Um, the y-axis is representing the energy, the total energy, both kinetic and potential energy of the uh, electrons. And uh, we're most concerned with electrons uh, in that are weakly constrained electrons um, that are the valence electrons of the material. So um, in, a, in a material when a valence electron is free to move throughout the material when it uh, becomes uh, disassociated from its atom, uh, from its uh, associated nucleus and can kind of wander, um, we call that, uh, we, we say that that electron has sufficient energy to be in the conduction band. So when, it ha when the electron has enough energy that it can move freely throughout the material, um, it's said to have uh, an energy at the level of the conduction band. So higher energy means um, it can move throughout the material. So if we look at the conductors or metals, um, the energy required uh, for an electron to be in a valence band it overlaps with the energy required for it to be in the conduction band. So that means there's an overlap between the energy of electrons that are in the valence band that are, are associated with atoms um, and, uh, and, over, and an overlap between that and the uh, energy required for that electron, for electrons to be able to move freely throughout the material and disassociate from their atoms. So um, in conductors we have this uh, this area of energy overlap where the electrons can easily migrate from one atom to another and that's why conductors are good conductors. That's be because, um, the, uh, because of the close relationship between the valence band and the conduction band uh, for conductors. Insulators on the other hand have require a lot of energy. We need to supply a lot of energy to a valence band electron to give it sufficient energy to move throughout the material. Now, um, I kind of lied by saying insulators uh, don't let electrons move through, uh, through the material. Uh, if you provide a sufficient amount of energy, electrons will move through almost any material. All right? So if we supply a large enough potential difference across an insulator, we can supply enough energy to an electron to get it to uh, let the uh, valence band electrons have sufficient energy to move throughout the material, but you need a lot of energy to do that. And uh, we're not going to be uh, working with any power supplies in our lab that uh, have sufficient energy to do that. Um, but uh, the valence band um, and conduction band separation, the difference in the energy required to get an electron from the valence, uh, from being in the valence um, being a valence electron in the insulator material uh, to being able to freely move throughout the material you require it requires a lot of energy. So a semiconductor is somewhere between there. All right, a semiconductor is a material where there's no not an uh, overlap between the valence band and the conduction band energy. So to get a uh, electron from the valence band to move throughout the material requires some amount of energy. We do need to provide a little bit of energy to it. But we don't need to provide a large amount of energy as we would have to with an insulator.
So semiconductors are uh, useful in a lot of applications and, and we can provide just a little bit of voltage bias to uh, what's called a bias to a semiconductor. We provide a little bit of voltage potential. We can get some uh, electrons to move from the valence band and provide sufficient energy for them to move uh, freely throughout the material. Um, also things like uh, in photovoltaic devices and PV cells, um, sunlight provides sufficient energy to allow electrons uh, to go from the valence band up into the conduction band and move freely throughout the material. Um, so that's the distinction between conductors, uh, insulators, and semiconductors. All right. Now that we've done that, we can move on to discuss uh, specific circuit quantities, including voltage, current, resistance, and power.